So I was perusing the wrestling interwebs today, and I was frankly looking for something to actually talk about, and something kind of struck my interest. So I'm going to do the O.J. Simpson and take a stab at it, if you will, minus the killing two white people part, allegedly. So I'm reading, and I see where WWE is promoting international tour, and one of the stops on the international tour is Switzerland, and Cesaro apparently is a little bit miffed and a little bit upset, and at the very least questioning, the decision to why in the hell is he not featured prominently or in any way, shape, or form on any of the graphic art advertising the upcoming appearances, I believe in 2017, for the WWE stopping in Switzer Switzerland. And, you know, I'm with him on that one. How, how does that slip through the cracks? How is that allowed to happen? I look at the actual art, and... I see Finn Balor, somebody who's injured, who may not even be on that card, being advertised. But the guy who's being featured somewhat prominently, at least in the tag team role, and has been on your main television show Raw for several years now, and Cesaro, is nowhere to be found. There's a weird thing where you see Xavier Woods' face actually featured twice on the cover art. And again, how the hell that happens, I have no idea. But we don't feature the guy that's actually billed from Switzerland. That makes no goddamn sense. This would have been like in the 90s going to Wembley Stadium and not advertising the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. This would have been like going to Calgary, Alberta, Canada and having Bret Hart on the card, let's say in the late 80s, and not advertising or mentioning or featuring or promoting him on any of the advertisements or marketing pieces whatsoever. It's like having The Rock come in for a guest spot in Miami and not advertising it. It just makes absolutely no sense. Like, and when I look at it and I see the fact that Xavier Woods' face is creepily on there twice, clearly somebody is dropping the ball. Clearly somebody is not paying attention. Like, how do you let that glaring air pass of having a creepy face inset right below somebody's arm, which is the same arm of the person whose face is featured up here. But yeah, we don't have the guy from freaking Switzerland plastered anywhere at any point in time on the actual promotional pieces for the Switzerland appearances. And we've got somebody that's currently injured who may or may not even appear on those shows being advertised prominently front and center. Who, mind you, yes, he has years of Japan and all this other bullshit. From a WWE standpoint, though, he doesn't matter as much as Cesaro because he hasn't had nearly the amount of television time invested in him and resources invested in him as Cesaro has. So it's just freaking ridiculous to not want to sit there and get a maximum return on your investment with Cesaro when you're actually featuring him in some type of story right now with Sheamus and them being a tag team. Furthermore, it's ridiculous because the one hometown guy you have in Switzerland, which you would think if you sat there and promoted his appearance there and advertised his appearance there, might entice some new eyeballs onto the product because somebody would say, oh my god, there's one of us on the fucking card. Why not go see him and get really behind this guy? God forbid in professional wrestling, we would use every avenue possible to try and draw money. And at the end of the day, that's what the business is supposed to be about. It's about drawing money. Why would you not take this natural device to potentially draw money? Instead, we're potentially misleading people because they think, A, they're going to see Xavier Woods twice, potentially, and B, they're going to see Vin Balor, when neither one of those is probably going to happen. So, so I get I get Cesaro's frustration, and I'm sure that's not all the frustration. He's like sitting there, he's been there several years, and he's still toiling in stupid tag team crap, and I get all of that, too. But it, it, it kind of harkens to a bigger issue throughout the entire professional wrestling industry. This is not picking on WWE or picking on this company or that company, a TNA or an ROH or Lucha Underground. It's everybody. It's across the board. It's an epidemic of stupidity when it comes to selling yourselves. 
You know, at the end of the day, people can argue about what makes wrestling great or what they enjoy about wrestling or what makes wrestling good or bad or whatever. But at the end of the day, make no mistake about it. If you are anybody with any type of wrestling brains whatsoever, the number one goal of the program is to draw the most money possible. The number one goal of the program is to make yourself as much money as possible. Would you rather be the world champion making 500 k a year in WWE, just giving you an example? Or would you rather be the insanely over top mid-card guy making 1.25 or 1.5 million? You could take your Mark Bullshit prop belt and pound it up your ass. I want to be that top mid-card guy that's making twice to three times as much money as the world champion. Now, I'm not saying that happens very often, but it can. The point is you want to be the guy that's making the most money. That's what the business is about. It's not about going out there and cutting the best goddamn promo or doing the most flips or kicks in a fucking match or having the most gassed up look. It's about whatever you could do to draw the most money, period. And when I see companies like the WWE so blatantly drop the ball for their European tour, it just frustrates the ever-loving fuck out of me. Because how could you be so wrong about this on so many different levels? Like I think about a couple of months ago here in Richmond, there was a WWE pay-per-view. I think it was No Mercy. Fuck, I don't remember. And part of the reason I don't fucking remember it's whatever one was on September the 11th is because they did a horrible job of advertising it here in the local market. You had very few radio appearances by anybody from the WWE, very few television appearances by anybody from the WWE, never mind the fact that you were actually doing a live pay-per-view special event on the network, so you'd have a chance to promote the actual special event for people going there live and potentially watching it. Oh, guess what? On the WWE Network. Potentially advertising multiple avenues to draw money for the event. The WWE was glaringly negligent in their lack of promotion of this event locally. I don't know how they do it in other places, but this isn't the first time since I've moved out here to Richmond. Because they come out here to Richmond much more than they did when I was living in Iowa. And it's consistently where they barely advertise when they're doing a live event, let alone if it's Richmond down at the Coliseum and they're doing a Raw or SmackDown television taping. They're not advertising anything generically in terms of who's scheduled to appear on a consistent basis. That shit should be plastered everywhere. Furthermore, especially if they know it's a TV taping in the week leading up to it, you kind of have an idea of where you're going with the freaking story next, so why not use teaser pieces to sit there and set up what could potentially be happening? So that way, A, if you haven't sold out the event yet, which in most cases they really haven't, you could maybe have more incentive for people to want to come and see what is going to happen, therefore selling out the venue, therefore drawing more money, and therefore doing what you're fucking supposed to do in the wrestling business, which is make money. Or B, if nothing else, people decide they don't want to go, maybe they're curious enough because it's here in their local area, they're going to watch and see what happens. And maybe they wouldn't have otherwise. You know, sometimes trying to figure out the motivations of the consumer is impossible. You'll go insane doing so. But you have to do everything you can to market and promote yourself. And just based off a recent experience the past couple of years here in Richmond, the WWE has been terrible about this. Absolutely terrible about this. I just, I don't get it for the life of me. You know, and then on top of that, TNA, I know they have all of their issues, but this is a problem going back years. They wouldn't fucking market or advertise or promote themselves to save their fucking life. If you're not going to go out there and try and sell your product to the people, then why the hell are you in the business? And I know this from my own personal experiences and from the experiences of others that I've spoken with over the last several years. There was a long period of time where it was harder to get a TNA person to do a television or podcast or any type of interview than a WWE person. And you would think in theory that WWE would be the hardest uh, shell to crack because they were the biggest company and they were the most afraid of what they would be associated with. But it was fucking TNA. Because they have to go through all these levels of approval, and most of the time you wouldn't get anything back. And you're sitting there, and some of the wrestlers, I think, sometimes would just use that as an excuse to not sit there and be interviewed. If you don't want to be interviewed in the wrestling business, where the ultimate goal of the program is to draw money, then why in the fuck are you in the business? But again, TNA, ROH, every once in a while... They'll send somebody like Mark Briscoe to do the weather on a Sinclair station. 
But those are too few and far in between. You know, the ROHs, the TNAs, what have you. You know, I'm on YouTube and I'll watch videos, wrestling related, non-wrestling related, but you would think based off of the viewing history, at some point in time, I would see some type of Google advertisement for an upcoming ROH pay-per-view or an upcoming TNA or ROH television show, and instead I get nothing. Now, I understand from the outside looking in, it can be easy to judge and pass judgment upon these companies because at the end of the day, it's not my chop, it's not my cheddar, my money that's going into this advertising and promotion. But again, at the end of the day, you have to put your name out there in order for it to resonate. You have to advertise yourself in order to sell your product. And sometimes you have to spend money in order to make even more money. It's like they put out this product and then they don't really care if anybody knows about it or not. Why the hell would anybody choose to watch? And how the hell would anybody be able to find you? I mean, this is insane. Every once in a while, you'll see on the Wrestling Dirt Sheets, there will be an interview with somebody. But those are too few and far between. The WWE, knowing goddamn good and well that some of the information fed to the Dirt Sheets and to the gossip sites such as TMZ comes from the very, very highest reaches of the WWE. And I have seen this personally in my own experience where many of the top people in WWE have the phone number for TMZ on speed dial, the people at TMZ and other news organizations on speed dial. So a lot of times these stories get released about the WWE, for example, who releases them, the WWE does. The WWE should be having their people doing freaking interviews all the goddamn time with dirt sheets and wrestling sites and what have you. And most certainly ROH and TNA should. With their smaller audience size, they should be trying to get every single customer they possibly can. And knowing that the majority of what is left of the international wrestling fan base goes on the internet, why in the fuck would you not want to get your talent out there as much as possible? It's about as ridiculous as the WWE making everybody sign an independent contractor contract, all the while not allowing them to actually be independent contractors, basically saying you only work for us. We won't let you go do spot appearances at indie shows. I understand it in part of protecting your investment and not wanting guys to get hurt, but at some point in time, you've got to get these guys out there in the communities as much as you possibly can. And you could sit there and let the independent promotion pay them for that particular night. You could sit there and accomplish so many things, the guys could just make an appearance. They don't even have to work a match. I don't get it for WWE. TNA used to give people a lot of shit for sitting there and saying, oh, you can have them, but only when we say so. Same thing kind of WWE does. Oh, but we don't want you to have them on, let's say, an ROH pay-per-view. At this point in time, if you're TNA, why in the fuck would you not want them to have as much airtime as humanly possible? If you're not giving them the airtime, why not let somebody else give them airtime with the agreement that you mentioned that they compete for TNA, that they appear on Impact Wrestling every week? It seems like it's so fucking simple, like why in the hell wouldn't you just do it? But this, again, gets to the stupidity and the ridiculousness and the idiocy that is engulfed the wrestling business today. All these dirt sheets and all these wrestling websites. A lot of the guys in the independent scene and the dudes from the past you'll see being interviewed, but the current active competitors that people actually care about, they're nowhere to be found in large part. And that's ridiculous. This is the ability to get free marketing, free advertising, free promotion. We just had an individual that used the media bias for him in his favor to say that the only bad publicity is no publicity, and bad publicity can be tremendous publicity, and Donald J. Trump rode that all the way to the fucking White House. But yet, here's the fucking wrestling business, and they don't seem to get that. At this point in time, in the state of the current business, any publicity you get, good, bad, or otherwise, is all good. Because you need that exposure. You need any way possible to generate interest. And sure, on the one hand, WWE's done some things, getting sports and or getting some of these major sites like Forbes and whatever to have contributors write about them. That's good. But there's this other grassroots stuff that the WWE completely freaking avoids. And then the ROHs and the TNAs and the Lucha Undergrounds. You know, there are lots of people on the interwebs that do reviews about these shows and talk about these companies and like these companies. 
and yet these brands won't do anything to fucking incorporate them. You know, it was years back, Bill and Doug, I think, had the freaking thing on TNA's website where they would talk about shit. Now, granted, you get into a territory where they could just come across as screaming, raging marks in the sense of they can't say anything negative about the product, which, again, kind of defeats the purpose. But it's about getting as many people bought in as possible. Imagine if you had a wrestling company that actually truly embraced everybody's opinion and gave everybody a voice and was open to the criticism. It would be such a welcome, welcome breath of fresh air in the wrestling industry that I think naturally some of the more hardcore wrestling fans would gravitate towards the product compared to others because they would like, fuck, even when they're wrong, at least they listen. At least I feel like I have a voice. At least I feel like I matter. Whereas this company's pounding it down my freaking throat whether I want it or not. I mean, I can't believe this. I think of something like a Lucha Underground, for example, and Deluxeman. Whether you like them or not, I don't really care. The fact of the matter is, is Lucha Underground on the television network that they get, they're on right now. I think they average like fifty to 60,000 viewers a week. My numbers could be wrong, but maybe they're not. Uh, I don't fucking know. But I think Deluxeman has over 20,000 YouTube subscribers. And he pretty religiously watches that show. Why isn't Lucha Underground reaching out to him? Not Deluxeman trying to reach out to them, mind you. Alex shouldn't have to do this. The wrestling company should be reaching out to him and having their wrestlers appear. Maybe floating him a little cheddar to sit there and talk about specific things on their brand. Maybe incentivizing him to more prominently feature the brand that he really likes on his freaking channel. I know. Same thing was like, I've mentioned it before, Andre Corbell in TNA. This speaks to the stupidity of fucking TNA. He's a ride or die dude for TNA, whether I always agree with it or not. But the fact of the matter is, he's somebody that's ride or die for your product. He has a following. Why in the fuck wouldn't you incorporate him? Same thing TNA, when I think it was Bruce Blitz was another guy that was really big on TNA. Whether I always agree with it or like it or not, Bruce Blitz had a following has a following still. And you would think that you would want somebody like him to talk about it. And if you sit there and say, well, we didn't get much out of it. Maybe he brings us a few eyeballs more every week. And that's it. At this point in time, especially if you didn't have to pay him anything for it, why in the fuck would you not get somebody like an Alex Delexman involved or an Andre Corbell or a freaking JD from NY206. I don't know what the hell he watches, and I don't care. Joe Cronin Show. I'm so sure I'm leaving out so many other guys. Bruce Blitz. Even guys like fucking Wrestling Jesus or Sean's View. The greater point I'm getting at is, is regardless of whether you like some of those people or not, or watch some of them or not, these are people with audiences. And even me on this particular channel, I know people in these different companies know who the fuck I am, I've been doing this shit now for almost six years. Yeah, 13 and a half thousand subscribers. You know, less than a lot of the other names that I mentioned. But still not exactly chicken feed. And at no point in time in the almost six years of doing this shit on YouTube have I ever had an important wrestling company ever reach out to me and offer anything in terms of, you know, talent for interviews or information or potential promotion, nothing. No incentive to promote them, no incentive to talk about them, nothing. Does anybody else see a fundamental problem with that? It's like these companies on the one hand want to embrace the internet, but they want to control the internet, and you just really can't do that. Unless you're in those countries where they do control the internet. <laughs> you maybe argue that America is already kind of there. But in theory, there is a free flow of information that you really just can't control and it's there. So if you can't fully control it, why not do the most you possibly could to potentially control? And the best way to control it is to not try to sit there on the one hand, do certain things with the internet, but then try to shun it, is to live it and embrace it. And do everything you can to own it. In six years of doing this, I've never had a wrestling company reach out to me for anything. And you know what's one of these things that if you're going to say, well, sometimes you're too negative on this shit. Well, you know what? Number one, make your shit better. And number two, grow a fucking set of testicles, you goddamn pussies. Because whether I'm speaking good about your product, or whether I'm speaking poorly of your product, or indifferently of your product, at the end of the day, guess what I'm doing? 
I'm still speaking about your product. It's the Donald Trump philosophy to get yourself elected. Forget all the other bullshit about Hillary. Forget all the other bullshit about this or that. At the end of the day, when you can sit there and get nonstop free coverage because of the shit that you say, chances are a lot of people already don't like you, and that's not going to change, but there are a lot of other people that do like you, and some people that may be motivated by what you've said, and you didn't have to pay anything for it. Over the course of a year plus, you would have even CNN running entire Trump's dump speeches for free. He's intentionally feeding them the information. The campaign is giving them media the schedules. They're doing all of this. And it got this psycho nut job elected president of the United States. But when I turn to the wrestling business, they're not smart enough to be able to understand the importance of promotion and advertising and marketing. And it's like so freaking obvious. If you don't promote your product, people aren't going to care. If you don't spend money to advertise your product, you're never going to make more money, period. You know, the days of the take trading and all this other crap, helping grow your brand by word of mouth, that's not the way to go. And that's not going to help. It's it, it just astounding to me. It, 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 and I just can't believe that at this point in time, these wrestling companies are so much caught up in their own bullshit, stuck with their heads in the fucking sand, and too protective of themselves to really open themselves up and potentially do better business than they have in several years. Of course, when I look at the wrestling business, and in particular now the people involved with the wrestling business, and I see the stupidity that takes place on a consistent basis, maybe I shouldn't be that surprised.